Hello guys, I'm going to do a rewatch of Twin Peaks today and I'm on to episode 3 which is called Rest in Pain and it's directed by Tina Rathbone and written by Harley Payton. Audrey always looks like she's just having some kind of fantastical daydream. I think she's thinking about Agent Cooper actually. <laughs> Who wouldn't be? She seems very keen to impress Agent Cooper. Audrey says she understood Laura better than the rest. Is that true? Or is she just trying to impress the agent again? <laughs> so, Cooper, you know, there's this romantic undertone all the time when Audrey and Cooper are talking and Cooper even tells Audrey that her writing style indicates that she is a romantic <laughs> yeah it's it's sweet it sort of seems like you know a young a young girl's crush on an older guy i wouldn't actually see this going anywhere in truth but i think for audrey it's a revelation of true romance <laughs> It's rather amusing that Agent Cooper um, is so keen to order all this food when he knows that Harry and Lucy are so eager to find out the news about who he thinks killed Laura Palmer. <laughs> so Cooper tells Harry and Lucy the dream and he, um, you know, you sort of might not have known noticed it in the last episode when Mike and Bob were introduced but there is this kind of duality with the other characters called Mike and Bobby. Um, it's something that you know we see a lot of in, in David Lynch's um, body of work, this kind of double identity thing. What the significance of them being, you know, these strange figures being called Mike and Bob. I we don't really know that yet. Um, we don't know if they signify Mike and Bobby. They could, you know... Agent Cooper seems to think that they are distinct and separate identities to, to Bobby Briggs and Mike. So Cooper is trying to explain to Harry um, the relevance of the dream and why he thinks it matters. And Harry is receptive to that. And Lucy is extremely excited about solving the code of the dream. It's kind of funny that at the end of rec reciting the dream, Cooper can't remember, which is something that, you know, happens to everyone in real life. When we wake up, we can't remember what just happened in the dream until uh, sometimes until a lot later, sometimes never. Albert Rosenfield is pretty on form in this episode with his... Um, long list of insults <laughs> directed at townsfolk of Twin Peaks. He is pretty funny. Although, <laughs> he treats everyone as if they are a halfwit and as if his intelligence and his work is more important than anybody else's. <laughs> there is actually an edit of Albert Rosenfeld's insults on YouTube which is highly worth watching because it's really funny. So Agent Cooper is um, shown to be a more sympathetic and emotionally driven FBI agent in comparison with Ro Agent Rosenfeld and his team that we saw last in the last episode. The fact that he picks up Laura's hand and puts it back on you know onto her body to rest in a more fitting pose is kind of touching. It contrasts against the way we see Albert treat Laura's body as if it's nothing but meat. Madeline Ferguson arrives in town and Leland Palmer looks astonished when he sees her, almost as if he can't quite believe that Laura's face is staring back at him in Maddie, Maddie's body and then he kind of snaps back to reality. 
after that brief moment of astonishment. Because we get the complete opposite of Laura in Marie, even, even though she's played by the same actress. Um, the dark hair, the kind of heavy glasses that sort of make her look studious and I don't think there's as much sexu sexuality in her appearance as there was in Laura's. So Leah was being rather truculent and refusing to answer any of the questions posed to him by Harry and Cooper. He comes across as an instant suspect in the entire case, in the whole Laura Palmer murder case. A very unpleasant character. So Bobby's father is finds him smoking and asks him to put the cigarette out. The tension between the father and son, you can cut it with a knife. Um, Bobby resents being told what to do, he resents the fact that, you know, he feels like his father is is coming down on him too hard even though I think Major Briggs means the best and he's, you know, when he says it's not fitting for a, an athlete to be smoking, I think that's just because he wants the best for his son, but Bobby doesn't take it like that. And he gives him a talk on responsibility and about contributing to society, but Bobby can't really understand what he's saying or he doesn't care. Major Briggs, you know, if you actually analyze what he's saying, he makes a whole lot of sense and he's a very intelligent and deeply imaginative and spiritual person. He has a lot of good advice for his son and for people in general, you know. Having seen, um, I don't want to jump ahead, but having seen, you know, knowing what happens in the movie Fire Walk With Me and seeing Bobby's behaviour in these first few episodes, it kind of makes a lot more sense. His acting out, his f f seemingly being on edge the whole time, his wanting to, you know, he feels, seems like he's full of anger and yet he wants comfort but he can't get it from his parents. Agent Cooper um, tries to talk to Albert about being respectful to the people of Twin Peaks and he describes Twin Peaks as a place where there is a lot of dignity and warmth between people um, indicating that it's somewhat different to city life. Nadine, poor Nadine, she she realizes that Ed isn't fully engaged in their relationship. It's kind of sad to see her so um, her self-esteem so low because of this and Ed seems to be more consumed with pity than than pure love. Cooper uses the funeral as an um, opportunity to survey the townsfolk of Twin Peaks and those that knew Laura Palmer and <laughs> we get this interesting um, glance between Agent Cooper and Audrey. Johnny is um, clearly not, you know, socially adept and when he screams out Amen, everybody just kind of looks except for Bobby who then follows it up with an Amen of his, his own. Bobby's speech is amazing at this funeral. He says the truth, he speaks the truth. There are a lot of people in town that kind of must have known that she was, that Laura was in trouble, but they really didn't do anything. Um, and Bobby just says it like it is. It's a very powerful performance by Dina Ashbrook. And then he says, you know, Laura would have laughed at your prayers. And that, again, sort of gives you a little hint about what kind of place Laura was in that she would be so you know disrespectful to that kind of feeling that kind of sentiment and there is yet more trouble between James Bobby and Mike at the funeral just sort of makes it into a spectacle and of course it ends with Leland Palmer throwing himself on top of the coffin 
and it's sort of semi-tragic, semi-comedic when the coffin is just going up and down and he's on the top. Oh dear. So we get this meeting between Harry, Cooper, Ed and Hawk at the diner and Harry feels like he knows Cooper well enough to be able to tell him more about the kind of weirdness and darkness that exists within Twin Peaks. Um, it explains why Harry has been so receptive to Cooper's, you know, in methods of investigation so far and, you know, indulging in his dreams and visions and stuff like that. Um, because Harry explains that he thinks, well, he knows that there is a darkness in the woods and they all do. And they've been, you know, fighting this presence for a long time. When they say this, it doesn't seem like, you know, it's they're not the sensible people. They're men of authority. And even though it's a secret society, which seems a bit weird, you kind of have to take them at their word that, you know, all this is real. Dr. Jacoby looks suspicious again when he turns up in the darkness to lay some flowers at Laura's grave. He does, you know, he's so he's so far removed from what you'd expect a psychiatrist to look like or to sound like or to act like that you can't help but think of him as a possible suspect. The way he talks about Laura is kind of disturbing as well, seeing as she was a minor and she was under his care. And she talks, he talks about her as if she was almost a lover and someone that was intellectually capable of matching him. Harry seems pretty infatuated with Josie, despite the fact that she is clearly involved in, in a rather convoluted um, situation with Catherine. I always love this conversation between Cooper and Hawk towards the end of this episode. When Cooper asks Hawk if he believes in the soul and Hawk talks about a legend that is um, specific to his culture. It all sounds very deeply spiritual. But then he ends this conversation saying that Laura is in the ground and that's the only thing he's really sure about. Which sort of um, is an abrupt contrast to the dreaminess of this spirituality that he's discussing. And of course we see Leland. He Leland seems to be completely in a world of his own. He clearly is not c capable of normal emotional responses at this time. It's very upsetting to see him in this state. He keeps saying home, home at the end of the episode as if that's a place he dearly longs to go but almost as if he's not quite sure where that is or what th that means anymore. And that's where we, where the episode ends, which is a very, it's a sad place to end the episode on. It certainly has a completely different tone to the last episode where we ended on sort of a humorous shot of Cooper with his hair erect, which was sort of a, um, almost symbolic of, <laughs> of the fact that he was aroused in the dream he had about Laura. Um, yeah, so it's a completely different episode this time around. Um, very much focused on the darker side of Twin Peaks I would say. Um, very good episode. I really liked the, um, the funeral scene I think which stood out in the episode to me and Bobby's speech at the funeral. Very um, memorable speech and one that tells you a lot about not just Bobby, not just Laura, but about the entire town of Twin Peaks, how they hold on to their secrets and how they want to portray a outward appearance of normality. That is also reflected in Harry's and the Book House Boys' secret society. Um, something that has to be kept underground, even though they all know that this darkness exists, but they all want to keep it quiet. Um, so yeah, a very good episode again, um, an enjoyable episode, even if it was quite an emotional journey. Um, next time I'm going to be reviewing episode four, 
and um, until then I would love it if you would subscribe and I'll see you again soon bye